Hello and welcome back to KAS Academic. Today we'll be looking at slope fields and solution curves. So, what are they? So from last time we learned about how in a differential equation you can integrate that and get a general solution. Now that general solution has a constant plus c or even more constants which means that there are a variety of curves that will actually fit the answer. That will actually be a solution to the differential equation. Now today we will specifically only look at first order differential equations because these only have one constant and these are the ones which can be written as y dash equals gxy and those are usually the only ones that we can draw slope fields for. So um, we'll start by actually looking at a question. Draw the slope field for y dash equals half x. Okay, so we can't really just start from nowhere. So the first thing we do is actually to draw a table of the gradients. What this really is saying is the gradient for each point is half of x. Okay. So the gradient is half x, but we still need all the different points on all the different possibilities for the curves. So if I draw out a massive table and I make all the numbers going across, all of them will be the x values and all the ones going down will be the y values. So let me start at minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3, and same thing down, so minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And this is a little bit tedious, but it is the most um, general way to do these questions. So, okay, I have my table here now. Okay, so, at, what we're saying is at the point, so for this first one here, okay, so we're saying that at the point minus 3 and 3, the gradient which is y dash is half of the x value. So that'll be half times by minus three, which is minus three on two. So I'm going to write that inside, minus three over two. And in fact, for every point going down the first column, they all have the same x value. And we know that the gradient is purely determined by the x value for this specific differential equation doesn't mean that's the case for other differential equations, which means that all of them are going to be minus 3 on 2. So at all these points, so at 0 minus 3, the gradient is minus 3 on 2. At the point minus 3, 1, it is also minus 3 on 2. Okay, now let's look at when the x value is equal to minus 2. So at x equals negative 2, the gradient is half of that, which is minus 1. So at all these points, the gradient is going to be minus 1. And then when it's when x is minus a half and y is minus 3, the gradient for that is half times negative 1. So half times negative 1 is minus a half. So I'm going to write that there. Okay, when it's zero, well, if we put in x equals zero, we get zero all the way. And for one, I think we're beginning to see the pattern now. So we get half. And for two, we should get one. And the last one we get 3 over 2.
Okay, Whew, so there we have all the different gradients for these points. Obviously, there are going to be a lot more points on each of these curves, but this is just a rough estimate of what it should look like. Then I'm going to start drawing out the slope field. So we have our two axes, 0, 1, 2, 3, Okay, so let's start from um, minus 3, 3. We know that the gradient for that is minus 3 on 2, which is roughly minus 1 and a half. So at this point down here, the gradient should be... So I'm going to draw a little line, which is indicative of the gradient around that point. So it's kind of like a mini tangent. So I would say it's around that. Okay. And for all the x values, x equals minus 3, sorry, for all of x equals minus 3 should be that exact same slope. So I'm going to make them all parallel as best as I can. Okay, and now at x equals minus 2, so at minus 2, minus 3, which is this point here, the line, the gradient is minus 1. So it's slightly less steep. So I'm going to make it like that. Hopefully you can see that's still a negative gradient, but less steep than the other one. Okay. And at minus one is even less steep, it's less steep, so it's going to be all of these are kind of like that. Okay, and at zero, the line, the gradients are all zero, so they're just little flat horizontal lines. And then same thing on the other side, so I'm just going to do this part, and you can pause the video and try to do this yourself as well. I tend to start from the axes just because I find it easier to start there. Okay, great. So now hopefully you can sort of see what this graph looks like. Um, that is the slope field. That is the complete slope field. If they ask you to do more points, you can do like more X and Y values and that will give you a better idea of the slope field. But as you can see from this, um, it looks like all of the possible solutions to the differential equation would be parabolas, concave up parabolas specifically. And that makes sense because if you integrate y dash equals half x, you actually get y equals half times x squared over 2, which is x squared over 4, which is a parabola. So... That is how we draw the slope field. Now, the solution curves. Okay, so after you draw a slope field, there are you can see that there are actually a variety of curves that could possibly be x squared plus 4 plus c because they, they can be shifted up or down. So, um, some rules about solution curves when you're drawing them in for an answer is that they do not cross each other. Second of all, you draw in one curve if given a condition. So maybe they'll tell you draw the curve through the point 1, 2. 
and you have to draw that specific solution curve. Or you draw three curves in different places if they want you to find a general solution. So going back to my example then, um, well, I can see that they should be parabolic in shape. So I'm just going to draw one of the curves through the origin. So if I'm going to draw the curve through the origin, it should look a little something like this. So it doesn't necessarily have to go through like each of the points of the slope field because they might not necessarily be the values possible for your curve, but it should follow the general direction of that curve. And let's say um, they asked me to draw the curve through the line, through the point minus one, minus one, which is this one there. So it should look something like this. And those would be my solution curves. So I'm just going to draw that one again because it's not very symmetrical. So something like this. Okay, now let's look at a question where we have to draw a solution curves then. So I'll pause the video and you can try to figure out what you think the solution curve looks like. Okay, so Hopefully you have a bit of an idea about what it should look like because this is a bit more difficult than the previous example. What I can tell you is that they look like squiggly lines. So if we want the solution curve through the point zero, 1, which is this point over here, I can see that it possibly looks something like so if I have that and go in the general direction, it should become steeper. And then on the other side, same thing, and it should kind of go steeper like that. So that would be my solution curve. And I'm going to draw the same thing, but through one zero. So one zero is this point here. So upwards, I know it kind of like goes like this. And then same downwards. And those two are my solution curves and they don't cross each other, those will be the answers.